Being linked with the likes of Raymond Dominic, Sam Allardyce, Sven Goran Eriksson is great. But when it truly comes to it, can we really pay their salaries? Hi, I'm Ankar Sharma, you're watching Super Football, the home of any football fans. Welcome to Half Volley. Let's get straight into VR, aka Very Articulate Review of the Week. And by the way, while I'm at it, shout out to Niranjana, who seems to have taken Half Volley really seriously, which he realized in the city's first game. Good job. Now, as you guys already know, the AF has been looking for a candidate for the Indian football team manager job for the longest time now. May 7th is the deadline for us to find that man. But after being linked with really big names like Raymond Dominic, Sam Allardyce, uh, Sven Goran Riksen, really big names, but also names that will demand really big salaries, AFL General Secretary Kushal Das has come out and raised a concern about the same in the following statement. Some top names like Raymond Dominic and Sven Goran Riksen have applied for the job. That's very encouraging. But the question is, can we really afford them? The salary demands may run into millions of dollars and we have modest resources. Top coaches do not come cheap. They demand big salaries. We have asked for government's help through SAI's ACTC program. Now, the salary of the Indian national team coach usually ranges around $25,000 a month, which can go up to $400,000 a year. A lot of money, but then if you consider Raymond Dominic, he would probably expect more than a million dollars, which is more than the double of the amount that it currently is. A lot of money, something that AIFF might not be able to afford by itself, so we'll have to get the government involved in the whole process. And with the general elections right around the corner, might not be possible. There's another part of AIFF, uh, some, some source that has remained anonymous in this whole situation, that has said that elections will not affect this whole process and that we can actually go on and afford uh, a, a manager of that category. But the fact that this is being talked about is a bit of a mystery. Are we actually considering hiring like someone like Dominic or Allardyce or Ericsson? AIFF and Preferred Patel's meeting with ILE clubs has been postponed from April 16th when it was originally supposed to happen to a date that has not been mentioned yet. The reason behind this, according to Kushal Das, is Rahul Patel's involvement in the general election. So I guess the meeting will happen after the elections. Politics being given precedence over football, not how I like to see things, not I know how you like to see things either. But as long as we get the resolution that we're longing for, I'm okay with it. If it has to happen at the general elections, no matter what the result is, if we just get the resolution we've been asking for, all good. The AIF of Disciplinary Committee has recently had a meeting, a lot of which revolved around Mirava Punjab and Ranjit Bajaj. Let's start off with Ranjit first. Now, uh, Ranjit, as you know, is very, very controversial when it comes to uh, making statements out in the media. He's, he doesn't hold himself back when it comes to talking about AIFF and FSDL. And that's something that was discussed in this meeting. And they want to create preventive measures so that uh, people are not able to talk the way they are on social media, which in my opinion is understandable. Even though we are a media platform, I understand that sometimes we just have to maintain the integrity of a federation. Understandable. The second part of it is related to Mineral Punjab. Uh, as you know, the game between Real Kashmir and Mirava Punjab was postponed during the Pulwama terror attack. That was pretty unfortunate. But uh, the game was supposed to be played after the I-League season was over, but AIF has now decided that the game has no point in happening at all. So one point is going to be distributed between the two teams. So it's essentially a draw. I think it's the right decision. Now this section of the show is called Social Heat Map, where it is the best of your comments made on SPF. So last week I asked you about the Indian players you'd like to see in the national team under the new coach. To that came a comment from Guru Krishna Ramakrishnan. He says, I don't think a new coach is going to straight away give new opportunities to new players, but I'm longing to see players like Susai, Brandon, Jobby, Samuel Lalimpoya in blue. If not, at least AIF should consider forming A and B teams and give them exposure tools. So, Guru Krishna, I quite like your comment, but I think I would make a small tweak to it. I understand the concept of A and B teams, it works in cricket as well, but I think when you're making an investment into a team, you would want to, in a second team that is, you would want to make that investment into young players. So instead of making another B team, let's just invest in the other 23 team maybe. I think uh, there's a lot of potential in that team. Under the tutelage of the new coach, I think it could do wonders. So maybe same amount of exposure tours or around the same number would be great. That, I think, is the best way to go about it. Velocity Raptor 15 says, No, I will not be happy if Albert Roca becomes the coach. I don't trust him, especially after he started coaching China. It's not fair to like a coach just because he has a good record in ISL. Internationally, he has been an assistant coach and lacks on the winning front. We need someone like Hakon, who has recently brought the Sweden Under-21 team to victory in 2015. 
So, Velocity Raptor 15, I would love to know your real name, leave it in the comments down below. But again, let's come to your comment. I understand not everyone wants Albert Roca as a coach. Me, on the other hand, I've wanted him for the longest time. I would love it if he gets the job. But with, with the China experience, I'm not sure if that even happened. It's sort of a hoax. So, I would love it if someone clarifies on that. But as far as ISL and AFC experience is concerned, I think he did a great job at Bengaluru FC. With Hakan Eriksson, has got great national team experience. He won the 2015 Under-21 UEFA Championship with them. So again, you know what the man is capable of. But is EIFF's picking of the national team coach solely dependent on ISL experience? I personally don't think so. The coach has to propose a plan to EIFF uh, of how they would like to see the Indian sport grow. Uh, so yeah, it, it's just not dependent on ISL really. Now this section show is called Pseudo Pandit where I take the Indian football posts that impressed us the most. The first one is from Rohit Nair. That's two Indian football trophies by Spanish coaches this season with quite similar philosophies from the Barcelona School of Thought. Probably something AIFF needs to think about when selecting the next national team coach with many players adapting and performing well. So I think what Rohit is saying here makes perfect sense. If you look over the years, all the teams that have employed a Spanish style of play have done quite well. Bengaluru FC, ATK, FC Goa, one of the most exciting football teams I've ever seen in Indian football. And then even he's been all in I-League with Alejandro Menendez. All of them have employed a Spanish style of play. Seems to be working quite well. And also if you notice, all the players that you've ever wanted to see in Indian national team have played under that philosophy. So maybe that is what catches our eye. Maybe a great, great thing for AF to keep in mind when hiring a coach. Spanish seems to be the way to go. Chiranjit Oja says, Why are we not seeing real bold steps from AIFF and AFC to promote women's football, like making it mandatory for clubs to maintain a women's team as a part of the club licensing system? Both national and AFC one would be a game changer. So I think what Chiranjit is saying here makes a lot of sense. Uh, women's football scene in Asia hasn't kicked off the way it has in Europe and the US, uh, and I would like to see it grow uh, more in Asia, especially in my own country, obviously. Now, I don't think every club has the liberty to splurge out money on women's team. Now, I'm not saying it's a necessity, so making it mandatory uh, will be a little too much. But I think there has to be an incentive system for all the clubs that are willing to make a women's team. If a national body has a lot of women club teams being represented, then that AFC coefficient should take a bump or maybe get some liberty here and there to function better. I think that's the best way to go about it. Making it mandatory, in my opinion, might be a little too much. But again, it's just the need of the hour, especially given the fact that the Under-17 Women's World Cup is coming in 2020. Adonari Sol says, Hey Indian football, Indian Super League, this is how it's done if we cannot remove the stupid playoffs. Rewarding the table toppers with an AFC slot and the final winner with another slot. P.S. I support a unified league and I'm pro-relegation. So, Adonari Sol, great username, thanks for adding to my vocabulary, but anyway, let me cut to the chase. Listen, I think I really like playoffs and I, it's something that I would really like to stick around in the Indian Super League because I think it garners the interest of the general public. There is an occasion to a semi-final and a final and people want to get interested and get involved in the game. So, let's keep it. But, uh, when the leagues get merged, eventually, uh, when the two spots belong to ISL, let's give one to the winner of the playoffs and one to the top of the league. I think it's the best way to go about things. So that's it for this episode of Half Volley. I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next time, I've been Ankur Sharma. You're watching Super Football, the home of Indian football fans. I'll see you in the next video.